Welcome to Globe of Science, everyone. I'm Bruce Hahn. With only 9 million people, Israel is the number one country in the world in terms of gross domestic expenditure on research and development as a percentage of GDP. How has a small country become such a powerhouse of innovation? With us today is Dror Bin, the CEO of the Israeli Innovation Authority, the government R&D investment arm, and the agency responsible for promoting the Israeli innovation ecosystem. Dror, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Bruce. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Can you tell us about Israeli high tech? What is the secret to Israel's success? Uh, well, that's a difficult question uh, because it's, it's a secret. Uh, Israel uh, was established uh, right after World War uh, II. Uh, you know, the, the people that came and uh, established the country were survivors of uh, this war. Uh, from its uh, first day, uh, the country was uh, surrounded by enemies and uh, also the country itself is on the verge of uh, the deserts and without any natural uh, resources. Well, Israel from its uh, first days uh, had the, the, necess the necessity to invent and to be creative in order to deal with its uh, challenges. Um, together with uh, great universities that were built here, uh, great entrepreneurs that uh, do not understand the word impossible, all of that created an ecosystem uh, that uh, layer after layer advanced in its uh, innovation. Almost uh, 10,000 uh, high-tech companies uh, operating in the country, and more than 50% of the Israeli export is based on high-tech uh, products and services. 10% uh, of the workforce is uh, working in the high-tech sector, uh, contributing uh, a lot to the economies. Now, what is the role of the government in the success of your ecosystem? Can you tell us about your investment model? Uh, but I do also want to give credit uh, to the Israeli government that uh, during the last uh, five decades uh, managed a very smart uh, policy, governmental policy, in, term, in terms of developing the innovation ecosystem in the country. The Israeli government, uh, through the Innovation Authority, has done uh, three things. The first one is to invest uh, in R&D. Basically, we are investing every year something like uh, half a billion dollars. The second uh, tool is to invest in the infrastructure of the, of the country in terms of uh, emerging uh, technologies. Uh, we want to sustain the success of the innovation ecosystem for the next uh, 5, 10, and 20 years. The third tool is actually that uh, the Israeli Innovation Authority is the advisor to the government in terms of uh, regulation, taxation, human capital development. Now. Israel has no significant local market, and so international collaborations are crucial for success. How do you promote it as a government? If you are a high-tech startup, if from day one, you are looking to the global markets. From the Israeli Innovation Authority side, we are helping the startups in developing their international relations. Uh, we have uh, something like uh, 60 or 70 bilateral and multilateral agreements uh, with uh, agencies and government uh, around the world. And uh, within those agreements, we are uh, funding together uh, R&D projects and uh, pilot projects between uh, Israeli companies and the other party company. Each country is obviously funding its own uh, company, but the idea is to create this, those collaborations between uh, companies uh, from both uh, countries. Dor, Israel and Korea together operate a joint R&D fund. What are your views on this so far? What are the benefits of such collaboration to the Israeli high-tech sector? Well, uh, this is a very successful uh, fund. Uh, I will start by saying that uh, the economical relations between Korea and Israel are very important uh, to us. We believe there is a great, very good fit between the economies and their ability to continue and grow and, grow and continue and collaborate. Uh, the joint uh, R&D fund, uh, Corail, was established already 20 years ago, and it's uh, one of our most successful uh, R&D funds. Uh, during those years, uh, more than 300 proposals were given to the fund, uh, almost uh, 200 uh, were approved, 
uh, an investment, a joint investment of the two governments of around uh, $70 million. So this is very significant. And many projects uh, came to life with uh, the help of uh, this uh, joint uh, fund. And I believe contributed a lot to the development of the economies of the two uh, countries. It is uh, so successful that uh, last year, the two countries decided to double uh, the investment. And uh, we are going to have a much larger uh, fund now because we see a very good uh, deal flow of uh, joint uh, projects that uh, we would like uh, to promote. Looking forward, what will be the next technological wave we should all look for and how should we prepare to catch them? Uh, well, this is also uh, very difficult uh, to predict. Uh, I can tell you uh, on which uh, emerging technologies uh, we are focusing. Uh, the first one is uh, obviously artificial intelligence. Uh, Israel is already ranked very high in terms of its artificial intelligence uh, capabilities. I think in, that in the number of uh, startups, uh, we are only after uh, the US and China in absolute number, despite our uh, very uh, small population. Uh, so startups that already uh, are using uh, artificial intelligence, but uh, also looking forward, it looks like artificial intelligence is going to be the main uh, disruption or technological disruption force uh, in the coming uh, decades. The second one is, uh, we call it uh, bioconvergence. Uh, this is a, a term that we actually uh, defined. And basically it means uh, a convergence between the life sciences by, uh, and specifically biology together with uh, engineering and uh, software uh, to create uh, things that are today even uh, hard to imagine. Now, Dor, finally, what are the most promising sectors for 2022? Uh, so for sure, uh, food tech is something I would uh, be looking at in the coming years. Uh, clean energy, obviously, uh, smart uh, transportation, precise uh, agriculture, all of those are needed uh, for humanity in order to uh, cope with the climate change uh, crisis. Uh, a lot of money is going to be heading there. A lot of inventions are going to be made uh, there. And uh, so this is my recommendation. And I'm not uh, talking about a specific uh, stock, obviously, but uh, about the sectors as a whole. Dror Bin, dynamic and brilliant CEO of the Israeli Innovation Authority. Thank you so much for being with us today and telling our viewers about the importance of Israel's high-tech industry and the global high-tech business sector. Thank you very much, uh, Bruce. Uh, enjoyed uh, speaking with you. Thank you. That does it for our show this week. Thank you so much for being with us. Until we meet next week, please be safe, healthy, and vigilant.